So here we have our derived stabilized residual based stabilized method from a fine scale interaction perspective, where we have the adjoint differential operator acting on our test functions. In our lectures on stabilized methods, we saw that there were a bunch of alternative options. Uh, so recall our stabilized methods. Well, the one that we talked about most was the SUPG uh, method, streamline upward petrov galerkin as the sum over elements of the residual times a stability parameter times a dot gradient vh. And we also had the galerkin least squares method as the sum over elements of the residual times the differential operator acting on the test function. And then the last one that I introduced but didn't really talk too much about yet was the VMS method, the variational multiscale method, as the sum over elements of minus the residual times the adjoint operator. Okay, so now we understand this last one, the variational multiscale method. Um, and we understand where it comes from, and that is precisely what we obtained in the last few lectures, right? So this is the same thing. So how do these other two fall into place now? Well, I'll first motivate the SUPG method and then the galerkin least squares method. And it's actually going to be pretty straightforward. So the first thing we're going to do is going to rewrite this bilinear form, this, this thing over here as an advection and a diffusion part. So first, we're going to rewrite or write B. Um, and I'll use the fine skills already. I mean, this is a general definition of B, but OK, I'll, I'll already use the fine skills. V. I also use the core scale test function. Yeah, in principle, this is a bilinear form, can act on any set of functions, but I'll use the definition that we ran into. As an advective part and a diffusive part, where the advective part was defined as minus u prime a dot gradient vh, and the diffusive part was defined as plus kappa gradient u prime gradient vh. Okay, we'll use this in a second. Now I want to talk about the projector again. The projector was hugely important. It defined our skill decomposition and it gave us a choice of how we define a, a good, clean, nice solution, a nice approximation. And we said that we want to use the H10 projector. So recall the H10 projector, and which was defined as if we operate that on any function u in the H10 space, well, then we obtain uh as the argument that minimizes for all choices or for all possible use in the space. And what, minim what does it minimize? Well, it minimizes the error in the H10 norm. And if we work that out, well, what was the H10 norm? Well, that was the integral over the domain of the gradients. Square. Yeah, so it's minimizing the error of the gradients. That was what our H10 projector was doing. So let's take, this is a minimization problem. We know how to solve this. Uh, we can take the functional derivative or the Cateau derivative. And then we, we obtain a certain expression that our core skills have to satisfy. So let's try and do that and, and see what we obtain. So we'll take the Gateau derivative. Gato, there's a hat on there. A derivative. If we take the, yeah, you can try this yourself if you need more detail. Uh, but I'll jump straight to the punchline. You get two times the integral of 
gradient of u minus gradient of uh times the gradient of well, some some other function, some test function, wh. Um, and that is going to be equal to 0 for all wh in our core skill space. Yeah? So you can already recognize that this is the fine skills. So this is in effect saying something about our fine scale functions. Yeah, this is saying that if we integrate the fine scales on our domain, we, or the gradient of the fine scales, and we, we dot them with some function, the gradient of some function in our core scales, then that result is always going to be equal to zero. That is precisely what this the diffusive part of the bilinear form is doing. Look at that. We're, we're the, the diffusive part of the bilinear form of the fine scales and the, the fine scale solution and the core scale test function is precisely the integral over the domain of the gradient of the fine scale dotted with the gradient of the core scale test function. And we said that, well, that one is exactly going to be zero uh, for any choice of, of core scale test function. Yeah, so this BD is in effect actually equal to zero without approximation. It's going to be exactly equal to zero under the assumption that kappa is constant, uh, I should say. So if, if this is constant, you can pull that out of the integral. Uh, but we, we tend to work with constant uh, uh, diffus uh, diffusivities, especially for fluid mechanics. Um, so under that assumption, um, this expression is, is identically equal to zero for the H10 approximation without approximation. So that means that B u prime vh is actually simply equal to b a u prime vh and if we make this if we make use of this knowledge already very early in our, de our derivation then we we don't end up with the complete differential operator acting on the test function here yeah because this was originated from from this complete bilinear form, u prime comma vh, that's how we ended up with the complete adjoint operator. But now we only have to take into account, well, minus uh, u prime a dot gradient vh. And if we then substitute our, our model, uh, u prime is equal to minus the residual times tau in there, well, that is precisely how we obtain the SUPG method. Residual of the core skills times tau times a dot gradient of vh. So that is SUPG. Good. So now we understand that SUPG is, is pretty much the same thing, um, but with a different set of steps taken in the derivation. How about Galerkin Lee squares, GLS? So this looks very different, right? So how, how would we obtain not the adjoint differential operator, but the differential operator itself and get rid of the minus? Well, it's pretty much the same, uh, the same story. Somehow in our derivation, we'll make use of the knowledge of the projector already before any approximation. Um, in order to do that, you have to realize something about the, eject, uh, the advective part of the bilinear form. Uh, so notice that B A U prime comma V H it is um, anti-symmetrical. It is equal to minus B A U prime V H. Yeah, I can show you that very quickly. Definition of B A was minus uh, U prime A dot gradient V H. Now we can do integration by parts, and then we get the integral over the domain of a dot gradient u prime vh plus some boundary term. But if we use um, our model of a problem where we have zero boundary conditions, then actually both our vh and, and actually also our u prime are going to be equal to zero on the domain boundary. And we get uh, that if we swap u prime and vh sorry this must have been very confusing 
vh u prime. Yeah, so it's, it's equal to its own adjoint, or it's equal and opposite to its own adjoint. Yeah, so we get uh, introduced now a minus if we flip u prime and vh. Okay, so if um, if from this Gato derivative we understand that two times the bilinear form of the diffusion term is gonna be equal u prime comma w h is equal to zero. All right, that's what that's saying. And I know that these are equal and opposite. Well, I could, if I wanted to, uh, add this all together and say that also B A U prime comma W H plus B A W H comma U prime plus two times the diffusive part is equal to zero for all wh in our core scale approximation space. So what did I do? I, I took our original Gateau derivative statement here. And I'm just adding something that is equal to zero, right? This is equal to zero. Because uh, they're equal and opposite. Yeah, so I'm just adding something that is zero. I can always add something that's zero. And then you find a new statement. So I can rewrite this a little bit and I can say, I'll be a of u prime comma wh plus I'm gonna take one of these guys b d of u prime comma wh and then I'm gonna move the other ones to the right and I'll find that this is gonna be equal to minus b a wh comma u prime plus no sorry still minus minus bd u prime comma wh and this also has to be true for all wh in vh now this was b u prime comma uh, wh and if i now replace uh, b u prime comma vh with minus b a mm -hmm. minus b d so that's going to be equal to uh, minus uh, okay and this is now the adjoint huh? sorry b h comma u prime uh, u prime comma v h then i'm in effect making use of uh, the adjoint already and then we we take the the adjoint of the adjoint, and that's how we end up with the original uh, L in here. And that's also how we got rid of the minus, because now we have a bunch of minuses in here. Okay, um, I think I want to leave it at that. Uh, I just want to give you an idea of uh, of how all these fine or these um, these stabilized methods can be interpreted as. Uh, variation of multi-scale methods, all with the same projector, interestingly, so all with the H10 projector. Uh, this is used inside of the fine scale approximation, the, the tau times the residual, but also just in the formulation itself, the fact that we have A dot gradient V already implies a fine scale projector, that is the H10 projector, or the fact that we use L instead of the L adjoint, it also already implies that we have the H10 projector We're already using that straight into uh, this this um, the way that the fine scales show up in the in the fine term formulation. Only in the VMS formulation do we not use that. We don't use it here, but we then make use of the same approximations for our definition of the fine scales in there. Yeah, so I hope this kind of puts everything nicely into a single package and it gives you a new way of of looking at and understanding uh, these stabilized methods that up until now might have might have looked like a, a bit. A bit like hacks, a bit like uh, ad hoc things that we add that we can understand why we add it. And we also have some ideas of what we want for our stabilization parameter. But now we have a, a rigorous understanding where they come from and what we want with our stabilization parameter. 
And again, interestingly, the stabilization parameters that we obtain from these definitions that we can derive here correspond directly to the, uh, the, the things that we came up with earlier based on other uh, arguments, either from what we want or what we need from coercivity. Yeah, so I really think that, that this gives a, a very nice new perspective on these methods. And I, I do believe that the variation of the multiscale method is the right way of, of looking at, at these things. And I'm hope, I hope that I kind of conveyed that to you as well in these, these few videos. So the next step is going to be to extend this now finally to the Navier-Stokes equations and use them also not only for stabilized methods, but also as turbulence models. And then we see that, well, that's pretty much all the same story anyway. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be the last set of videos. Um, and those will be also the last lectures. So that's going to be next week, Thursday. Thank you for your attention. I'll see you. See you then.